Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, finally getting back at the car today. Last episode we built the cold air intake on the car. That was the piping from the turbo to the air filter. And today's video is going to cover basically everything to do with the electronics on getting the car to run and finally going to get that car fired up today. So stay tuned, we're going to cover the wiring, uh, mounting of the ECM, the uh, programming it took, and a little bit on the EFI Live that I did the custom tuning as well. So stick around, let's get to it. I'm going to give an overview of how I did the wiring on the car. Uh, one thing that's important to note is the engine, the LML that the truck came out of, and the 2014 Camaro, they both run uh, Global A electrical architecture, which means they're very similar in the way they're designed and the way they're wired, which is very helpful in getting this thing wired. So as you can see on the screen here, I'm just going online here to get the diagrams pulled up. And you're going to want to go into the electrical diagrams, uh, powertrain control. That's going to give us all of the wiring definitions for all the pinouts on the ECM in the car and that's what's important. Um, uh, my car was a standard transmission and since I converted it to automatic there's a lot more extra wires to kind of add in there. Uh, if you were to start with an automatic car that would save a bunch of the wiring and there'd be less to splice in. But the big important thing to note here is that when you go into these two ECMs here you can see on the left is the car and on the right is the truck. And I'll zoom in here and I'll show you a while or how these two uh, electrical designs are similar between the car and the truck. Even though they're two totally different vehicles, GM was really awesome, really good in wiring them the same way using the same. Um, actually, the throttle pedal in the car, I'm using it with the ECM out of the truck. So you can use a car throttle pedal and it will work with an E86B truck ECM for the Duramax. So that was really neat. I was able to reuse the factory throttle pedal. There's no crazy brackets underneath there. If you were to poke your head under the you know, dash of the car there, it's all factory. So what we got to do here is to find two things of the same identifier. Identifier is these small little numbers that are on top of the wires there. So I'm going to go down to battery B plus here on the truck side, and it's 440 right there. It's labeled 440. And we go back over to the car side, and you find B plus here. It's a different spot, but it's also labeled 440. So what we take that is we take that from pin 20 on the car ECM, and we move it over to pin 67 on the truck ECM. So that wire's moved. And basically the whole thing after that is a repetitive process of moving each of those wires one by one because they all have the same identifiers on them. It actually makes it really easy. It's like they take all the guesswork out of it. So basically all we need to do is find all the matching pin numbers. Uh, you can see here for the data bus, which is a very important one because we're using the factory data bus. We find the same 2501, different wire colors, different pin positions, that's totally fine. We're using the same identifiers at 2501 and you're going to take that out of the car ECM uh, wire connector and you're going to put it into the right position on the truck ECM wire connector. So basically to wire this truck ECM into the car, that's all I did. I moved every single wire over one at a time from the car ECM connector into the correct position on the truck ECM connector. And actually it's really cool because the truck and the car uh, same electrical architecture, they actually have the same Molex connector on the ECM. So right now I have the car factory ECM connector plugged into the truck ECM and it works. It's about 180 degrees out which makes it a little bit weird for the wires and I probably should replace it to make it a little better but it actually works, it's totally fine. All you gotta do is move all the wires around um, and uh, get them all fixed up to where they need to be. So you can see here ignition 1 voltage I'm just kind of highlighting its uh, label is 439 and there's a there's a one appropriate one for it in the truck side 439 so all of them are like that the throttle pedal the data lines the power the grounds they're all labeled the same so after you get all those factory wires moved over there's going to be some that don't exist like uh, for instance the glow plug light so that I just ran into the car and I used a small LED indicator I got off Amazon and it works really good it's in the center console um, now on the screen you can see I have the data lines from the two car, the car and the truck, and they're very different the way they're laid out. The car actually uses the DLC, like the data link connector under the dash, actually goes straight into the body control module on the car, and then the body control module uh, goes into the communications bus to the rest of the modules. When I use that factory spot, it wouldn't work, it wouldn't communicate. So what I had to do is I had to cut those two wires at the body control module, and I ran the data link wires out under the hood. They were two extra wires I had to run. I ran them out under the hood and I spliced them in according to the right position on the truck 
wiring diagrams, which was between the it was between the glow plug module and the ECM, so pretty much right next to the ECM, it wants the data link connector. And don't ask me why it wouldn't work the other way, but it wouldn't work. And I tried and I tried, and it just simply would not work. But after I moved that, that solved that issue. Everything's working good now. I had full communication. Um, so yeah, that basically is how I wired the car. Um, any of the connections I made, I either tried to keep the factory wire pins on the end since they're the same connector, and I just repin them. Wires I had to extend, I just use solder and heat shrink. I still like using solder and heat shrink. I've never had it come back and bite me at all. So that's still my preferred way to do some wiring. You can repin and rewire the whole harness. That's a great way to do it too. There's a lot of specialty tools and a lot of connectors to buy individually and locally here in town. Those connectors are very expensive to buy. So I just soldered it. Maybe someday I'll pull the whole wiring harness off the underhood, out of the underhood of the car and I'll redo it wire to wire like end to end. So it's all like brand new wiring harness. But for now, this is going to get me by. This is going to be just fine. Um, that would maybe upgrade later. So yeah, that basically takes care of it for the wiring side of things. If you got any questions, anything I missed, uh, comment them down below. Uh, but for now, we can move on to starting to do some of the programming stuff and the other um, problems I ran into to get this thing actually cranking over and running. All right, so since the ECM is so massive for the LML, I ended up relocating it to the driver's side frame rail here. It's literally the only spot I could find that it fit. I ended up getting a factory truck bracket here. I trimmed off all the factory bracket mounting points on the back side and then just drilled it along the bottom and on the back side of it up against the strut tower there. I drilled holes through the pinch weld and the frame rail and then I was able to just use some flush mount bolts and basically bolt it there along the bottom and up the back side. It's a good place to mount it. It keeps it away from the exhaust. It keeps it out of the way of other stuff. The intercooler piping has room to go through and so does the air intake for the air filter. One of the next things I needed to do for the car was since it was a standard transmission car was the BCM and the instrument cluster both had to be reprogrammed. I ended up sending them to White Audio Media Services, so shout out to them. They did a great job and they got it done fairly quick aside from shipping to the States it takes forever because I'm in Canada. But as you can see here, after the programming is done, now it works and the transmission gear indicator shows up on the instrument cluster just like it would from factory. So this solved kind of part of the neutral safety switch problem which was preventing the car to crank over. But it wasn't the only thing preventing the car to crank over. I still needed to relink the immobilizer system or disable it. And I tried to disable it with EFI Live and I found out pretty quickly that it's actually impossible to do in an E86 ECM. What you need to do is you got to have a BCM and theft to tear module in place and you need to actually relink them with GM factory software. So I had to order an MDI to do so. All right, so the MDI finally showed up. And this is kind of a dealer level programming tool. It's going to allow me to relink the uh, any anti-theft system in the car, the VAT system. I bought it from uovdi.com. Uh, it looks like a good quality one. I got it, uh, I watched another YouTube video on another guy who got one and I just picked the same one as him just so I know it would work. I'm gonna get it hooked up to the car, get all the drivers installed on the laptop, and then I'll get into the programming of it. I think I'm gonna have to buy a license from GM to license the VIN number of the car. I'm not sure yet, we'll get it. I'll see what the thing says. And then hopefully we're gonna be able to relink it up. And then with that relinked up, then the BCM is gonna send that start signal to the ECM, which is gonna turn on the starter relay, which is gonna start the engine. And also enable the fuel system, because I think that's the last two things that's preventing the car from actually starting. So I'll get this thing plugged in, get it updated, driver installed, and we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I just Googled Bosch MDI, and then pretty much the first thing come up was this BoschDiagnostics.com, and you're gonna download the MDI2, MDI, MDI2 software. This will install it, and then it comes with the drivers and everything. Once I installed that, I was able to click on the, well, I won't click on it because my serial number's on there, but uh, in, you go to the software, bring it up, and then you can click connect, and then I had, it said it connected to the MDI2, so. So that was good, that's installed, and now the computer can communicate with the MDI. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into TDS. So that's AC Delco, this is the actual AC Delco thing. You're gonna have to make yourself a login. It's free to make a login. Okay, so finally got things kind of figured out here, I think. I ended up having to reprogram the original VIN number into the ECM that the ECM came out of, or the truck the ECM came out of. Now I've licensed that VIN, gone back on SPS, and I'm just going through the immobilizer learn now. I think it's going to be successful. I'm not 100% sure. But things are looking up. 
I gotta. I just did the state of health check. That's what this 11 minutes is. Once this is done, I should be able to crank the key, I guess. Or I might have to go in and now go back into the car side of things and do the BCM relearn. I'm not sure yet. A little bit of trial and error, but things are kind of looking up. So that's pretty good. So it gave me a successful after that was finished. So I went and tried it and it cranked over. So cool thing about this is the factory immobilizer system is working exactly as it should be. All right, so now that we've got the car cranking over, we can set ourselves up a base tune. And to do that, I'm gonna use EFI Live. Start by opening up the file for the car. Go in here to the edit tab. And the first thing I'm gonna change is the speedo parameters. I'm gonna set the differential ratio to the right gears and the tire circumference to the right size of tire that's on the car. Next thing I'm gonna do is in the speed limiting, I usually take all the speed limiters off. A lot of the DEF ones and the emissions ones down there might give you trouble down the road, so it's best just to get rid of them. VATS, go ahead and leave VATS enabled. You need VATS enabled or else the car won't crank over. It needs those signals to be set. And the next thing I'm gonna go through actually is the EGR in the engine operation. Since this is a swap car, the LML originally came with a bunch of emissions equipment on it. And since it's a swap, we're gonna go ahead and need to take all those off. So it's as simple as just going into the EGR tab here and then clicking on disable and disable. Another thing, since I made an aftermarket air intake, we're going to rescale the MAF sensor. That's something I'll be doing at a later date, but that's where the mass, uh, mass airflow sensor scaling is. Then I went ahead and wanted to set my idle speed. I like just a nice, normal base idle speed, no high idle. This truck has, or these uh, ECMs have a high idle from factory when it's cold out, so I got rid of that. And then the throttle valve, since we have deleted a bunch of the stuff, we have to disable the throttle valve because I'm not running the throttle valve. So if that's gone, that needs to be disabled as well. And then you're gonna go into the vehicle options here, and this is where most of your emission stuff. These all need to be either a zero or a no or a disable. Um, and the command start stuff at the bottom doesn't work unless you reprogram your BCM, which is something that White Auto, White Auto Motive and Media Services can do for you as well. Um, one of the last things we're gonna do is go into vehicle options parameters in the GM LAN. This is all of the communication CAN bus messages that is sent between the modules. So there's a lot more on here than we need to touch, but you want to go through and turn off each one of them that has anything to do with, say, the emissions, like say this DEPF lamp here. You just simply click on it, drop down tab, click disable, and that'll get rid of that so you don't have any weird messages. There's a lot of them to go through, so you want to go through each individual table and set them all to disable. If you do have a little bit of trouble down the road, some of those unused unknown ones might need to be shut off. It's kind of a trial and error thing, but you have to go one by one and be very careful because you could shut off things that aren't supposed to be shut off, which can cause trouble. All right, the very last thing we're going to do while we're in EFI Live is get rid of all of the DTCs that are related to anything that we have deleted. So say that intake throttle valve we deleted, EGR, any of the temperature sensors, um, pretty much anything that's going to create a code for us that you have removed or changed, we're going to need to delete that code so it doesn't come up. You can see they all say active on the one side there. I'm just going to scroll down and find something I can use as an example, like these EGR codes here. Simply just double click them, drop down, click disable. Uh, if you want to speed yourself up and save some time, you can use the shift button on your keyboard and highlight them all at once. And then you should double click the very bottom one and they all change at the same time. There's a lot in this list and there's a lot to change. So make sure you go through it, make sure you double check it. Make sure you triple check it and just don't make sure you don't miss any. When you do start the car up, if you've missed any, you'll probably just get some codes. Some of these codes can be permanent codes and it's really great to get them deleted and gone right off the bat because permanent codes are a little bit tougher to, to disable or delete once they come on. But anyways, don't forget right down at the bottom there's communication codes and you want to make sure you turn off all of the emissions communication codes if it is a swap and if you are not running in the emissions stuff. I can't imagine you would be in this one. But once you got all your codes taken care of, that's pretty much gonna set us up a good base tune. That's not gonna change any power levels, that's not gonna touch on any torque management, but we're gonna go ahead and then you just go in and click the calibration flash, that's all you're gonna need to do. Um, mine just comes up with an error because I don't have my interface connected and I'm not connected to the car or anything. But once you get that connected, a little green line across the bottom here will fill up until it's done and it'll flash and that'll be it and then we'll be ready to start the car all right so the car is ready to go kind of i think i'm gonna go fire it up see how it starts get it outside and i'm gonna take it home
got HP tuners hooked up. I'm going to scan it on the way home. Glow plug. and warm up for a minute and then we'll get going home. <laughs> 